Well, good morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand up? Let's get excited to praise and worship our Lord this morning. Father, we welcome you in this place. Take control. Lord, have your way in this place this morning. What does it mean to be saved? Is it more than just a prayer to pray? More than just a way to heaven? What does it mean to be His? To be formed in His likeness Show them they have a purpose To be salt and light in the world, in the world To be salt and light in the world let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Oh, that the church would arise Oh, that we would see with Jesus' eyes We could show the world heaven Show what it means to be His To be formed in His likeness Show them they have a purpose To be salt and light in the world, in the world To be salt and light in the world to be salt and light in the world, in the world. To be salt and light in the world. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. I am redeemed, 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 I am redeemed. I am redeemed, 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 I am redeemed. To be salt and light in the world, in the world, to be salt and light in the world, to be salt and light in the world, in the world, to be salt and light in the world, to be salt and light in the world, in the world, to be salt and light in the world. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Rise up, rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so, say so. chosen i am free and i am living for eternity i'm free now forever you picked me up turned me around you placed my feet on solid ground yours now forever and nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back 
Cause my chains fell off, my heart was free I'm alive to live for you I'm alive to live for you And amazing love, how can it be? Cause you gave everything for me You gave everything for me You've washed my sin and shame away. The slate is clean, a brand new day. I'm free now forever. Now boldly I approach your throne to claim this crown through Christ my own. I'm yours now forever. Come on, let's not hold back. And nothing's gonna hold me back. No, nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back Cause my chains fell off, my heart was free I'm alive to live for you I'm alive to live for you And amazing love, how can it be? Cause you gave everything for me you gave everything for me and now I'm free to live free to give I'm free to be I'm free to love you free to live free to give free to be I'm free to love you, free to live, free to give, free to be. I'm free to love you, Lord. Cause my chains fell off, my heart was free. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you. And amazing love, how can it be? You gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. my way when I feel your hands of grace rest upon me staying desperate for you God staying humbly at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I will believe 
I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your sin Love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free High in yours, high and forever yours Mountain high or valley low I sing out, remind my soul that I am yours High and forever yours offering that I bring humbly I fall on my knees to proclaim your everything 
My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. I live to
forever I'm gonna worship you and I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna I'm gonna worship you Lord I'm gonna worship you Just in your own way. Begin to cry out to him now. He's here. Begin to just express to him how much he means to you. Forever I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. You see here at this place at Faith Assembly Church we worship. Because God says we as the righteous need to cry out unto him. It's what he deserves. It's what we do as believers. So I'm encouraging you as a church right now, everyone in this place has a voice. If you don't, you can lift your hands. You can allow your heart to be fully engaged in what God is doing because He's here. We want to connect with Him for one more moment. Father, receive our worship. Heaven, open your gates so that you can receive this. In the Old Testament, it spoke of like an incense that was burning. The, the fragrance of that worship, the fragrance of those prayers would rise into the heavenly places. And God would receive those prayers as if it was a fragrant offering. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. Do that. Speak to Him. Cry unto Him. Let Him know how much you love Him. Express to Him how big He is, how amazing and wonderful He is, how detailed He is involved in your life. It's worth it for you to do this right now because he's here. It's worth it. It's worth it. Lord, we worship you. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you. He's holy. Father, have your way in this place. A name that's above every name. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you, Jesus. I'm gonna worship you. Forever I'm gonna worship you Lord yes and I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you Jesus we worship you Lord I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you I'm gonna worship you forever I'm gonna worship you 
Because you deserve to be worshipped. Father, we lift your name because there is no other name by which a man can be saved. Father, we adore you in this place. We extol you. These words give you praise. They give you honor. They give you position in our life. No longer are we going to be swayed to the left or to the right by cunningness of men's words or different ideas that come across our desk. God, we're going to focus on you. We're only going to shine for you. We're only going to be lights for you. God, I believe where your presence is, things have to go, like the selfishness of our heart. The pride and the spiritual things that are against you have to flee because in your presence, there's just this fullness. There's this completeness that, God, we lack until we're in your presence. Lord, we need you. A lot of us have come today with a need. And I believe, Lord, you're already touching lives. I believe you're already ministering to us, meaning you're already here engaged in the things that matter to us. Thank you for being that kind of God in our life. The only God, the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give all praise and glory to you. Can you say with me, amen? Amen. amen. Come on, we got to give God the praise he's deserving. I want you to look at your neighbor. Give them a high five. Welcome them here to Faith and get your Bible out. We're going to get into this series called Go Glow. How we doing? Well, that's pretty good. Look like the front five rows are happy, happy, happy. How are we doing today? Yeah. <laughs> I love to be in the presence of the Lord, and I love to share these moments with friends. Um, if you're here, if you're here, that's a great way to start that. If you're here, <laughs> duh. Welcome as our guest to Faith Assembly. I'm the lead pastor here. My name is Jason Taylor, and you're surrounded by an incredible group of family, an incredible group of believers that love to worship the Lord. I hope you've experienced that. I hope you've experienced being welcomed. I hope you've been informed, and I hope you've experienced the presence of the Lord. That's the whole point of you being here today, the experience in God. So I just want to welcome all of you here as well. We started a series last week, and my brother-in-law shared with us a very unique approach to the idea of being the light of the world. Remember that? We kind of had these glow sticks and he began to express to us the value of this glow stick and how it was kind of meaningless like this. It's no fun at all. Nobody enjoys a glow stick that's not glowing, right? But the ba basically there's this glass, uh, I believe he, he's, it's called a glass ampule, all right? And that thing separates the chemicals that are in here that are designed to glow when combined. That's very, very interesting to me. You know, I always like the sound of the crack, you know, the snap crackle pop inside there and you shake it up. It kind of like this. If I can be strong enough. Huh? Can you shake it up? And it begins to glow. So if the lights were off right now, this would actually glow. And he began to, to share with us the process of us being believers. How this, if it's not glowing, is no fun. It's not even doing what it was created to do. But a process has to take place before it can actually glow. In our life, we're just kind of here, aren't we? Until this interesting process begins to happen in our life. 
In this case, a piece of glass was separating the two chemicals that were created to combine to make this glow. In our lives, how many know we're born into sin? If you, if you don't believe me, just, just these beautiful little children that grow up, I've seen it. I've got two of them. They're awesome angels until they're like two. And then you know they're born into sin. And you have to point them in the direction. They, they just learn things and you don't even teach them. The idea is that there's stuff in us that has to break. There's stuff in us that has to be broken and removed so that we can mix with God through his son Jesus and begin to glow. We are the light of the world. You know that? Jesus is the light of the world and therefore he is in us. We say things like he's the hope of glory, Christ. Okay, so this is one of those participation messages today. When I, when I go like that, that means there's an answer out there that many of you know better than I do. And you need to shout it out. The hope of glory, Christ in Praise God. So with that being said, we've got these things in our lives sometimes that keep us from mixing with the presence of God. We were created to glow. You were created to be the light in this world. We walk in a dark world. And isn't it nice to have light so that you can see where you're going? Praise God. And that was the illustration that he gave us. So we started this series called Go Glow. And I was having a lot of fun with this because I like to fish. And a good friend of mine invited me to go fishing with him. And he shared with me one of his uh, honey holes, if you will. It was on a pier, and they had lights and stuff. And one of the arsenals that this guy uses is called a gulp. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like a shrimp, or at least it does to fish, okay? And, and it, it's kind of in this goopy kind of stuff, and it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like cologne for fish. You know what I'm talking about? So you put cologne on because it's, it's, it's attractive, and it's not repulsive like body odor can be, right? So you mask it with an attractant. Well, this has an attractant on it. And it's, it's slippery. I did come prepared. Because I'm going to lay hands on some of y'all later. And y'all are going to that's the oil of the spirit. No, it's not. It's the gulp. <laughs> Anyways. Paul shared with me this thing. Well, what was really, really cool, and I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but I'm going to have to use the lights tonight, today. So if, if you don't mind, we can turn the lights on and off a few times. We'll leave the projectors on. It's not like it's going to, you know, keep you from going to the bathroom if you need to. But this thing has phosphorus in it. It's like this. It, 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 let me just kind of share if I can find it in my notes. It's got this stuff called uh, the chemiluminescence kind of stuff. Remember that? That's what's in the glow stick. And nobody can say that, but there you go. And if you can, you're smart. But this thing was really cool because we were fishing, and Paul goes, just stick it up next to the light before you cast it out there. I mean, he's, he's reeling in fish all the time, and I wasn't, all right? And he says, stick it up next to the light. So can we turn the lights off for a second? When this thing gets up next to the light, and you're ready to cast it out, all right, I'm getting close. Look at that. Well, that's weak. I'm just saying, it worked, because this was a really big light, all right? This could be like the worst illustration ever. Note to self, never, ever, ever do this again. But I'm going to stay until it works, and if that's okay, we've got Luby's opens at 11. We'll be good to go. Anyways, I, this was on my fishing line, and I, I had it up next to the light. We turned it off, and this thing glows. You've got to be able to see that from there. Anyways, turn the lights back on. I thought that's the coolest thing. It's pitch black. The fish, you know, I mean, obviously they can, they, it's got cologne on it to begin with. I didn't really need to do that. But this was like awesome because it was glowing through the water. And he was sharing with me, look, certain things are created to glow. They have this, this texture about it. They have this, this internal structure about it. But we are not created to glow by nature, are we? No, we're not. Say no, pastor. That's not how we're created. Like all things, all right, things that glow are somehow impressive to us. When I was a kid, I think I was eight, because I looked it up on the internet, and the internet's really truth of everything, right? And it said that this suction man was a toy in the late 70s, and so that would have made me around seven or eight years old. And I had this toy. It was the coolest thing ever. You stick it next to the lamp for like 10 minutes, obviously, and then you turn the lamp off, and you take it, and you throw it on the wall, and the rest pretty much sucks. Because it's on the wall, sucking on the wall. And it, it moves, 
and it kind of comes down. And that was the most impressive thing back in the day that we got to do. As kids, you got suction man. You, you pointed him towards the lamp, and he glowed, and then you threw it up against the wall. You can look it up later. It's not a lot of fun. A guy actually found it in a garage saying, what is this? And everybody that's commented on it says, that's the worst toy ever. <laughs> so I don't know. When your kids, little things are fun. Are you with me? Fantastic. Things that glow are helpful. Things that show light are meaningful, especially in a dark place. The takeaway from last week that Brian shared with us was this. Light makes things less what? Light makes things less dark. Jesus in us makes life less dark. Jesus in you makes life in others less dark. It should be attractive. The light in you should not be a deterrent. It should be an attractant. And today, I want to talk to you about mood lighting, if you will, all right? And so the ultimate purpose of light is to shine. Like the fishing lure has phosphorus in it, and it's a chemical reaction called chemiluminescence. Like in the glow stick, it's the same. But there are natural things out there like little light bugs. Have you ever seen those little fireflies? That, that fly around, I thought that was pretty awesome, okay? Well, those things naturally have call, a thing in it called bioluminescence. That senseless knowledge has nothing to do with Jesus other than he created it, okay? But I thought I'd share it with you because it has a design, it has a purpose, and it has a function. And like us, we don't naturally glow. We don't naturally glow. There has to be something that changes, something that's broken. Last week we talked about Jesus, or God takes things of value, and he breaks them. He blesses them, and he serves them. You remember that throughout the scripture, how he took the fish and the loaves. He took them, he, he broke them, and he blessed them, and he served them. And he does the same thing with us many, many times, doesn't he? When we come to him, he takes us, and he breaks us, and he blesses us, and then he serves us as the body of Christ to a lost world because we are light. In in John chapter 8, verse 12, this is not our text today, but I'll just give it to you. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he goes on to say, we're the light of the world and that we are to, to let our light shine before others that they may see our good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. So why are you created to glow, first of all? Why are you created to glow? To point and to glorify our Father in heaven. So if you thought you would become a Christian and become the light of the world so that you could be in the spotlight, guess what happens? When the spotlight's on you, everyone glows. That's not what this is about. This is about glowing in a dark place, bringing light and making things less dark. It's a lot like strategic lighting in a movie theater. If you're, well, most of you don't go watch movies, and that's fine. Maybe in your house, you like, let the mood, the mood lighting begin. If you're going to serve a nice romantic or elegant dinner to your wife or significant person and you lay that, you just, the, the light comes down. You, are you with me? Okay, I'm just wondering. Mood lighting can set the, set the tone. I want you to understand. We have the ability to set the mood, if you will, in a dark place. We have the ability within us because it is Jesus in us, the light of the world, the hope of the world in you. If when you walk into a room and people go, oh, and they walk out, you're not shining the right light. You with me? We are to set the mood. I want to go in the scripture real quick with you to Exodus chapter 34. I want you to put your hands in Exodus chapter 34, and I want you to put your hand in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Two primary sources of scripture that I want to talk to you about. But here's how it's all going to make sense. Light makes things less dark. That's going to carry throughout this theme in this series. And in order for you to understand that, I want to share with you the principle of proximity. Do you understand what what proximity means? It's closeness, nearness, next to someone. You're sitting next to someone, so your proximity is closer to that person than it is on this side of the room. Does that make sense? Whoever you're sitting next to is the closest person to you. The The principle of proximity is this. It's the rule that when two or more objects are close to each other, they may be seen as a particular unit or as if they are one. 
There is a place in Scripture that just blows my mind. And this is about Moses. This is about when he went up on the mountain and God began to speak to him. And God's presence was literally around him. And after that experience, Moses comes down off of that mountain. And what happened to him? Do you remember the story? He looked like something, didn't he? He looked like a walking glow stick or to a fish a gulp. He was glowing. There was a hue about him that was unique. And let's read that in verse 29 of chapter 34. It says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, means the Ten Commandments, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Proximity, the principle of proximity is this. If you're in the presence of God, you will glow. And in the Old Testament, let me show you what this was like. I need some help. You're Moses. Say hi to Moses. I need the lights off, please. This light, I don't want to shine anybody's face, but this light is God. This light is the light of the world. At this point in time, Moses was simply a reflection of the light of the world, okay? Okay. He was not a carrier of the light of the world because they had not had Jesus as a relational connection. Jesus had not yet gone to heaven and he had not yet sent his Holy Spirit to dwell in men's heart. Make sense? So they only had the ability to reflect the light. All right, I don't know if you can see, turn, fl- reflect up, don't hurt anybody's eyes, reflect up that way. Right. Up, up, up. Okay, there you go. So as a reflection, I'm not pointing the light on the ceiling, but wherever he's pointing is a reflection of this light. Does that make sense? And so as he's in the presence of God, the light is extremely intense. I mean, it's like there's like a glow about him. But as time goes on, because the Old Testament is described, the covenant, um, the glory of God in the Old Testament is described as fleeting or fading. It was temporary, right? It wasn't permanent, as the Word of God says. So as time went on, look, look at that thing up there. It's fading. Fade away, fade away. So I don't have to go too far. You see how that is? But in proximity, meaning the closer he got to it, the brighter the light is. Thank you. Put your hands together for Ray. He's a cool guy. That's the idea. We were reflections. Moses was a reflection of the presence of God. But he only glowed as long as he was in the presence of God. And after a period of time went by, he stopped glowing. And we're going to read further. It says in verse 35, They saw his face, they meaning the people around him, was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. Have you ever wondered why he put a veil on his face? Have you ever wondered why he covered up the hue, so to speak? We're going to find out in Scripture in just a second. But I want you to understand this. The glory, if you're you're writing notes, write this down. The glory of the Old Testament law was temporary. The glory of the Old Testament law was temporary, and eventually it faded away. But the glory of the New Testament is this. Write this down. Grace grows brighter and brighter and brighter. Grace grows brighter and brighter and brighter. We are becoming, you know that, right? So we're not yet complete until we're in heaven. But because we now are carriers of the light, we're no longer a reflection, so to speak, because now we carry the light into dark places. Okay? So the Old Testament glory was fading. The New Testament glory is grace, and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And this is why I, I believe this with all of my heart. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 7 through 18. It says, Now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, what might that be? Ten Commandments, remember? Moses came down from the mountain with that. Came with glory. So that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. And then there's this word, transitory. That word means fading. Okay, that word means uh, it's it's becoming inactive, if you will. Though it was, okay, fading, though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory, which is speaking of Jesus. And if what was transitory or if what was fading came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, what is the hope? The hope of glory? What is the hope? The hope of glory? 
I know you're reading 2 Corinthians, but what is the hope? It's the hope of glory, Christ in us. Will you please say it so I don't have to say it again? Say it loud. What is the glory? Thank you. Thank you. Therefore, since we have such a hope, Christ in us, we are very bold. And we're not like Moses. Read the scripture with me, verse 13. We're not like Moses, who had put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. Look, he wanted to put something over him because he didn't want everybody to see the end of what was passing away. Remember, like I showed you, he was a reflection and it was bright. But proximity was like super bright on the mountain. But once he came down, it was fading away. And so he put something on it because he didn't want people to see that. We don't fade away anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We radiate with the, with the very presence of God. And that's kind of what I've come to tell you this, this morning. Their minds were made dull for this day. The same veil remains on the Old Testament as it's read. It, is not, uh, it has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. What happened when Jesus died on the cross? There was a veil, literally, in the, in, the, in the temple. What happened? It was taken away. It was ripped in two. No longer needed, right? So we now have access. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed. When else have you heard that word transformed or transfigured? Go with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Most of you can say this by heart. If you don't, just fake it with me. Ready? Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Those words literally mean a change on the outside that came from within. You literally, when you read the word of God, being in relationship with Jesus, you have this change on the outside that came from within. That's what takes, it's transformation. Transfiguration, I guess, is what it says in some of your Bibles. The life of Christ, who is the light of the world, in us is what makes us glow. But we need to allow the light to transform us or change our nature. Like when you come to the altar in just a little bit, it's not that you're coming to an altar. You're coming to be altered by nature. So the change in you can be evident on the outside, what was made first on the inside. That is how you live for Christ. That is how you live as a believer. Just because you get saved doesn't mean everything changes. It's a process but now, you're no, you don't walk around like a mirror anymore reflecting necessarily the presence of God. And here's, here's the reason. I need the lights again. One more time. When you walk into a room, you walk in like this. They say, hey, Jason. They go, huh? You talking to me? You think I'm crazy, don't you? I'm trying not to point at anybody's eyes. But who, who don't I like? Let me go over here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You, are, you now radiate a light that's in you that cannot be separated. Jesus is the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Only because he is in us. None of a righteousness of our own, right? So we can't brag of how light we are, right? We brag of a righteousness not of our own, but a gift of God. And it's... Jesus in us. We don't have to be a reflection anymore, do we? We don't have to go on the mountain of God and come down and, and veil ourselves because we're afraid people are going to see it fleeting or fading away. Listen to me, kids. When you're in the presence of God every day, proximity suggests to me that you can go into a dark school and be the light of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go into your office Monday morning and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you don't need to go in there as a reflection anymore of Christ in you. You go in with the light burning bright. And when people see you, it shouldn't be a detractant. It should attract them to you. Why? Because, my goodness, how do you see so well? How do you have such discernment? How do you have such wisdom? You don't have the education that should, that should suggest that. How did you know that? Well, it's, it's, it's the light of God in my life. The Word of God, right? God is the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God, correct? So when you have the Word with you, guess what? It's in you. You don't have to get a reflection to try to see the stairs anymore. You walk 
by faith because now you've got the light in you. Turn the lights back on, please. I was going to do a silly illustration, not like my other ones weren't. And I was going to show you how you can layer selfishness, pride, the world, fear, all this other stuff. You can put layers on all day long. Even though the light of Christ is in you, you can snuff that out. And I wonder how many times we're crawling into places in life, literally. Because we don't know what's in front of us. And we keep bumping our heads, stubbing our toes, falling into a pit, so to speak. And it's getting so frustrating that you just literally, you just go to the ground and you do this crawl thing. Because you just are sick and tired of running into stuff. Yet the light of the world is inside of you and wanting to radiate. You just got to peel away some of the layers. Do you remember when, when Lazarus was, it's not in my notes, but it's what I'm seeing. And I want to just follow what God's put in my heart. Do you remember when Lazarus was called out of the tomb? God gave him life. In him there was light. But there was no way that could shine unless those around him got the grave clothes off of him. Does that make sense? A lot of times I think we go through life, we got all these layers and layers and layers of experience and fear and pride and this, this, and that. And when you come here, we want you to be free because it's the knowledge of him. It's the son that sets you free. And when he's free, you're free, as the Bible says, in fantastic. So we got sometimes, we have the light of God in us, but we're not seeing things clearly. And how do you begin to see things clearly? The word of God says that this is the lamp into our feet and the light into our path. If you're not reading this, if you're not absorbing this, if you're not plugged into this, what happens? You're putting something else in front of it. Well, no wonder you're falling all over yourself. No wonder you're getting in so much trouble. No wonder you, why you can't see. Proximity, the principle behind proximity is just to stay as close to Jesus as you possibly can. Stay as close to God. And you know what God does in response to that? He says, you know what? I'm not going to ask you to come to me anymore. I'm going to live in you. You can't run from that. Oh, and by the way, it won't take you 10, 15 minutes to fight traffic to find me either. Just call on my name. And I am as close as the mention of my name. I am closer than a brother. I'm in you. Therefore, nothing can separate the love I have for you. Can you see the value of proximity from God's perspective? If he could ever be there on time, every time, where would he want to be? Right here. Just in case. Just in case, right? Right? Many of us love our, our spouses and our family members and all that, but they can't be everywhere all the time with us, can they? Doesn't, it doesn't mean they don't love us. They just can't be there all the time. But the value of the principle of proximity is this. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. You'll never go anywhere without me. You'll never have to face anything without me. You've never had to because I am now in you. That's the value of proximity. You know, I thought I used to understand darkness until I was out on the Maasai Mara at Il Kiliani camp. And this is outside of Kenya. I was, I was invited to go to, to this place. And I walked outside. One night the stars were, it was like the lights were on. And one night I didn't see anything. It was the craziest thing. So dark that if you went anywhere at night, you had to call for an escort that had a light and they were armed, I'll add. You couldn't do anything by yourself after dark. It, this, the kind of darkness that reminds me of like West Texas when you go to the Natural Bridge Caverns and you go to the darkest place and they say, okay, for 15 seconds we're going to turn off the lights. And this is total darkness. You remember that? And you, you can't see your, your hand. It made me understand the value of light. I, I, I was like, okay, this is great for 15 seconds, but I don't want to live like this. I don't, want, I don't want this for the rest of my life. The beauty of having a relationship with the Lord is that his light is in you. It goes with you. It is in you. And we don't have to be a reflection of that anymore. We don't have to worry about it fading away. Sometimes we sit back and we go, God, are you with me? Are you here? Well, I would have to tell you from his perspective, yes, and I've never left you. Maybe there's just some things in the way right now and you need to get them out of the way because I have never stopped burning for you. Maybe there's that glass ampule inside that needs to be broken and removed so I can mix a little stronger with you. And if, 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 if it takes it, we'll just shake it up a little bit more. Proximity suggests that many of you already have everything it takes to glow. 
Maybe you just need to be exposed to the light a little bit longer. Maybe you need to be in his presence a little bit longer. This is just things that I'm trying to help you understand the value of proximity. The value of proximity. Psalms 119.11, it says, I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Why would you want to hide the word of God in your heart? Why would you want an intake of this constantly? If, you know, we have several of you in my equip class on Sunday mornings, and the, the value of this class is not just to, to exchange information. It's to show you how important it is to start your day with the Word. If you start your day with this, you know what you're doing is you're putting on the belt of truth first. Everything else, your righteousness, your salvation, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, all the things that you need are all connected to this thing. It starts with the belt. Unlike us, when we get up in the morning, right, it usually doesn't start with the belt. That's last. It's like a decorative piece and hold the britches up. That's not the case. Because when you have things that entangle you and things that are like, you know, uh, bothering you, worrisome thoughts and so forth, you can take all of those things as if they're the tunic that's getting in the way of you running and you can tuck them into one place. It's the belt of truth. And you can get from one point to the next. And that's what the value of that truth is. You've got to start with this. You can't, you've got to get this before you leave. If you could put this next to your nightstand and nothing else would work, if you could open this up and it would shine a light in the darkness, would you do that tomorrow? Or would you get up and would you just kind of feel your way through the room because you memorized it before you turned the lights off like Brian said last week? Remember, you stand at the light switch because you're, you're capable, and you turn the light switch off because you memorize the room and you go for it. This is the truth. This is the way. This is the life. This is the light. Jesus. When you open this up first, you're fueling what you need to for your day. Unlike everything else, I'll just be real honest with you. We've had some serious stuff going on in our world in the last week. You can turn on the news and you can see it. You can read about it. You can hear about suspect one, suspect two, and the tragedies and the heartbreak of those suffering for just senseless acts. You can see how even when somebody wasn't trying to do anything bad or wrong, something happened and a lot of innocent people are now hurting in West Texas. You can see how life happens. But unless you wake up with this, nothing is going to make sense. I'm not saying that any of that makes any sense, but it certainly gives me a position to stand in the midst of it, doesn't it? It gives me a position. Even if I can't stand, I can sit next to the Father because it is out of them flowing the Spirit, as we've taught more than once out of Revelation 22, the life flow, right? That Spirit is the Spirit of God. It is living water. You don't have to, you put on the, the full armor of God, you get in position to glow, if you will, but when you can't, the Holy Spirit says, I will make that word natural to you. I will, I will bring to remembrance what you need to, to understand. I will speak for you when you can't speak. I am praying for those families that God will just stand with them and let them know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when they just can't stand, they just need to stand and stand there for, as the Word of God says. Because they deserve that. But I, I don't know where they're at as individuals. I don't know where we are. And we need to be praying. So as a part of our service right now, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? I want to pray for the families. Heavenly Father, we love you. I felt in my heart we needed to, as a family, with people watching online in both campuses and so forth, we need to focus on the value of human life, on the value of your purpose in those lives. A lot of people are confused right now, and we understand the author of this book is to bring life and life to the full, but we also understand that we do have an enemy. It's not a person. We have an enemy. His name is Satan. He operates as the devil. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, to cause confusion, to bring a division between us. And we know, God, that this has just been a tremendous, tremendous moment throughout our last week in our entire nation that's affecting the entire world, literally, because now we have other nations looking at their children being here doing certain things, and we wonder, as parents, what could they be thinking, too? So, Father, I just pray for, for those I don't even want to call them victims. I want to call them human beings, God, that were in a place where they were hurt. Because, God, I want, I want them to know the love of God as we know you. I want them to feel your Holy Spirit as we feel you. I want them to feel the proximity and the value of being in your presence. But I don't know who they are or where they are in their walk with you. 
But I do know I can pray. And the, and, and the prayers of the righteous, you said, availeth much. Which means you're revealing things in the supernatural. You're revealing things in the spiritual that I have no awareness of. But I can pray the prayer of faith, believing. Touch those families. Mom and dad whose, whose children were, were hurt. Touch the families, the, the gentleman who ran his race and he was coming back to cheer people on. That was something, that was a noble act. And in that noble act, Father, this happened. Confusion and thoughts have to be racing through their minds. But in Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, you said, that as we present these needs to you with prayer, that you would guard our hearts and minds, those two vulnerable places, through Christ Jesus, through the hope of glory Christ in us, through the anchor in these storms that holds us tight, through the very light source within us that creates the glow. Father, I pray for them. All of those families that were affected in West Texas, God, I pray for them. I'm not going to stop praying until you lift the burden from my heart because there are so many, Father, that were directly related or indirectly related that now have these emotional things that they're wrestling with. God, you've not come to give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And those are the things that we're going to hang on to. We're going to lift their, those families up to you. And we're going to say, God, touch them. Walk with them. Embrace them. And show them, God, a love that no human being could ever show. Show them a mercy, God, that goes beyond our, our understanding. And show them, God, how much you, you mean to them and how much they mean to you. Whisper those sweet nothings into their ears when no one else can. Soothe their hearts, God, as no one else can. And set at ease, Father, their minds. Because, God, you are. And as we focus in our lives, we really need to understand the value of what we are. We're literally a lamp. We're literally like a lighthouse in the midst of a storm. And there are people in our lives right now that are hurting worse than we'll ever, ever know because we don't, we've not been privileged with all of the information. And you know what they're looking for, God? They're looking for that lighthouse. They're looking for just a glimpse of hope that we, there's land and there's a place of refuge. And God, I pray that they see us, that the light in our heart is not offensive. It's not diluted and confusing because we live one way here and another somewhere else. But teach us to glow for you. Teach us to shine for you. Teach us to be in the right place at the right time, prepared in your word. That's the only way we're going to be effective. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say with me, amen. Amen. Listen, John Wesley said this, light yourself on fire and people will come and watch you burn. <laughs> that's, that's pretty terrible because it's happened. But it's true. There's a curiosity when something's burning. Don't, people want to come see, don't they? They want to see it. They want to be a part of that. You know, uh, we, we've been called to be a light. That's pretty good. I'm glad you guys are here. You're going to get part of the message and maybe give me some mood music. Amen. We've been called to be the light of the world, and it takes more than just an altar experience to glow. It takes proximity. Can you, can you get that? Before you leave today, just ask God, chisel it on your heart. Proximity matters. Proximity matters. Being in the presence of God, that's why he chose to be with you. That's why he chose to not just be next to you, but in you. Because out of them is flowing that very life source, and it's flowing in you. That's the Holy Spirit. You've got to get this. You've got to get this. The world is looking for light. Even if they don't know it, like I explained in that prayer, a ship lost at sea is begging for light, some source of light, meaning in the midst of their turmoil, that could change everything. Just a glimpse of light. <laughs> you realize without saying anything, you can be a glimpse of light in this dark world. You can be the glimpse of light in this dark world. That's why God didn't say, you're going to reflect me for the rest of your life. He said, no, I am in you, so where you go, I go. Therefore, where you are, you're shining hope. Isn't it amazing how we, we see things from a perspective often from the end, right? So we, we want to we see things work themselves out. We want to see things, you know, with the answer at hand. But do you know the value of that light is, is more valuable in the midst of, it, of the storm than it is after the storm? 
The value of your light is, is a lot more valuable in the midst of a storm than it is at the, from the beginning of a storm when you see it approaching. It's in the midst of the storm that light brings absolute value. It brings absolute hope. It gives absolute direction. And what do you think the light of God is meant to be? Hope, purpose, and direction for eternity. And next week, that's what we're going to talk about. The value of the menorah. The value of that light in the presence of God. What exactly did it light and why? And I want to show you that you are every bit as important as the menorah. More important because that just showed the way. You have within you the way. Guys, we have such a responsibility, don't we? Do you feel as though you're capable of carrying the light of God? Amen? Do you feel as though you can walk into a dark place and bring light to others, to, to bring hope to others, to bring you know, purpose and value to others? Because that's exactly what you do. You can't see yourself anymore as, as, as the, 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 the meek and the lonely. You walk in and you just go about your business. Some of you need to stop before you get to your desk and shine for a moment. There might be someone lost looking for the light. When's the last time you walked in your office and you just kind of went like this? Okay, I'm going to go to my desk. Y'all think I'm weird. But you know what it's like in your office. You know those little nuggets and pieces of information that someone shared in their brokenness, afraid to give you all the information, but just enough so that you know they need something. And you felt many times going back to your office or going back to your chair or going back to your place of work, and you're like, I wonder, should I have said something? Or I... I wonder if not saying anything said enough. I wonder, I wonder. You don't have to anymore. You're not called to change people. You're called to shine the change. All you're called to do is be in position. All you're called to do is be there and available. God's done it all, hasn't he? He's taken all of that off our shoulders. You are the light of the world because it's Jesus in you. I've said it, and some of us have, have seen it as comical, and it's okay, but listen to me again, and I'm going to say it over and over and over until Jesus comes. <laughs> you're the hope of the world. You are. And you're like, yeah, whatever. You don't know. No, I know what's happening in you. And it goes beyond you. Sorry. Jesus in you is greater than you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Therefore, where you go, goes something greater. Where you go is something greater. So shine. Glow, if you will. Go glow. Do whatever it takes to be a beacon, to be a lighthouse, to be available. If somebody comes to you and they have questions you cannot answer, can I give you permission to say, I don't know? You just got it. Don't have all the answers. Be the one that's different. And say, I, man, I don't know. But I know who does. Can we just pray? God, you know the situation? You are omnipotent. You are omniscient. Meaning you know it all. And you're everywhere all the time. So you understand this better than I do. This is over my head. Be God. Shine. Shine into this dark place. Shine so that the light makes this less dark for them. And when they begin to see clearly, the light will show the way. And then things change. This church is going to explode when one of you gets this. I've met some people in the last month that have invited like more people than, than I've invited in like a year. Because something in them exploded. Light. Man, they are, they're not afraid to go into dark places anymore. They're not afraid because they get it. When they get there, they make things less dark. And they own it. And people are like, I'll go. I'll go. Where'd you get that? Can I be a part of that? Yes, yes. Come to faith. We're not building numbers. We're actually adding to the kingdom. And when it's the light... 
all men are drawn to the Father when we lift up his son. Will you help me do that this year? Will you shine? Will you be like one of these? Put some cologne on and shine? (laughs) You notice I added the cologne. Would you be like one of these? Let God break the glass ampule inside of you, shake you up a little bit, so that when you go into dark places, you are attractive. You're attractive. Will you do that? And will you get into this? the lamp into your feet and the light into your path because this is what changes everything. Be ready because God's going to use you. Please stand. Isaac Newton said this, everything continues in a state of rest until it is compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. God, I am praying that you allow your Holy Spirit to impress upon everyone here today your love. Your love. Are you ready to be a light? Will you allow the light of God to flow through you into this dark world, to set a mood for others so they can see the glory of God? Will you allow time, create space so that you can have proximity, you can stay in the presence of God, walk with Him daily? That's what it's going to take. Matthew five sixteen says this, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to shine. Father, we just thank you. We stand in your presence right now, and I thank you that this message, I pray, has been absolutely clear to the purpose of why we exist. There's a lot of reasons why we can say we exist, but the main purpose is this, to be light in this dark world. And that, the easiest thing about that is just to be who we are and nothing more. God, I pray for the one that's here today that came in with a preconceived notion of maybe what this might be like, what message might come forth or whatever, but your Holy Spirit began knocking on their heart. If you're here today and God has been knocking on your heart through his Holy Spirit, making sense of all of this, every head bowed, every eye closed, lift your hand and say, Pastor, today I want to be saved. I want the light of the world in me. I'm tired of walking in this dark world. I'm tired of walking and stubbing my toes and being places I shouldn't be. I need the light to be the lamp into my feet and the light into my path. Just lift your hand right where you're at. It would be my honor to pray with you right now. Just lift your hand right where you're at. So I know you're not worshiping the Lord. Lift it high so I can see you. Okay, praise God, praise God, praise God. Everybody say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and seeing in me what I couldn't see for myself. I'm tired of living the way I have. I'm ready to change. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and begin to shine through me that I might see and know the way to go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We got to give praise to God because there are a number of hands that raised. Here's what we're going to do. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. I want our prayer team, I want our heroes and and, and freedom ministry teams to please come forward. This is your chance. This is your chance to move. If God has placed within you a burden or if he's he's just kind of twisting that internal instinct of yours a little bit and saying, I want to have more part of your life. I want to begin to shine more through you than you're letting me. If you feel as though there might be some layers things that are in in front of the light of God right now in your life, therefore keeping you from shining the way you need to. Do not be embarrassed. Do not feel like you're the only person on this planet that's ever felt that way. Trust me, I'm the one that has to deal with this message before it ever comes here. Hello? And I'm the same way. There are things in my life I put there, and I'll even call it this, false humility. It's terrible to say that, but sometimes in humility, I'll go like this, "Ah," and God has wanted me to say, no, I can shine right now. I don't need to be that lowly, meek, and mild thing right now when the light is going to show the way to the Father. I don't need to sidestep and let somebody else do it for me when God has put the burden on me. If he's let my eyes see, I need to be the one to do it. I can't pawn that off on anybody else, an environment, a place, or whatever. It's me. Because Christ in me is valuable, not me. I want to invite you to come. I want you to come down here. I want you to let somebody pray with you that courage would enter your heart. Courage to let go of the things that might be hindering you, that might be holding you back. Because here, here's it is. This is it. He that the Son sets free is free indeed. 
free to shine, free to be the presence of God in others' lives, to, to show them so that they might be attracted to the very light, so that you can let the name of Jesus be high and lifted above every name. So let's go. I'm, I'm, I've done enough talking. You guys know exactly what's going to happen. Every head, battery, eye close. Just begin to pray and worship. Lift your hands forward for those that might choose to move. But if you're here today and you need those layers to go away, now is a perfect time, like Lazarus. Let us help you take those, 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 those things off. That's why we're here today as a family. In Jesus' name.
every tongue that we all confess you this scripture before we started while these folks are continuing to pray and receiving ministry first of all aren't you glad this is a church where people can receive ministry I hope so because that means you can too if you need it it's here Isaiah 61 the first part of this this is the actual scripture this is prophetic, actually. Isaiah is a prophet, and he speaks this prophetically of Jesus. And Jesus literally uses this portion of Scripture the first time he opens his mouth and the temple to begin to speak after he's baptized and the Holy Spirit's a part of his life. And he says, The, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoner to proclaim the the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. And this is the part that was on my heart. I wanted to share earlier before we prayed, but let me just share with you right now real quick. To comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Some Bibles say a spirit of heaviness. How many know that God's covered all the bases if we'll just trust Him and reach out to Him? That's what I want to encourage you to do this week. Absolutely. I want you to get your kids around you because my kids are asking questions. They're seeing the stuff on TV and they're, every, every time something loud happens or sirens go by, I mean, they're thinking now. Now is a perfect time for us to lead our families, to shine, amen, into a dark place so that it's less dark basically, for them. So I want you to understand Isaiah 61. I want you to read that this week. Let that become a part of the dialogue of your spiritual voice, if you will. Let this become a part of God's voice within you. He's not given us a spirit of heaviness or despair, nor has he given us a spirit of fear, of power and of love and of a sound mind. You, you have everything that you need, according to this scripture. You have everything that you need to stand, to stand and to let God be God in your life. I hope that this series is encouraging you to shine where maybe you might not have had the courage to shine before. I hope this series is helping you understand that there are things in our life that can be broken and it be okay because there are things in us like Jesus that wants to mix with us so that we can shine brightly. I want you to understand that it's okay to, to, to lean on the value of proximity because the principle suggests the longer you're there, the more like that you become. So... I'm just telling you, stay in the presence of the Lord. Shine brightly and do it every single time that you get a chance to do it. Go into dark places. Don't just go into places full of light. Don't just call all your Christian friends and Christian buddies and spend all of your time there. Spend some time in dark places and be the light of the world. And it will it'll, 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 it'll bless your heart because you'll see a value in you that's a God kingdom value. Amen? That's what I want for you. That's what I want for this church. I love you guys. Next week, we're going to talk of this menorah, and we're going to talk of our value. And, and this is one of those messages that 
if you've never really understood the value of the Holy Spirit in your life or your responsibility as a believer coming to church, this would be a great week for you to be here because I'll help lay some traction for you to understand and pray and wrestle with the value of who you are in the body of Christ, in the Holy Spirit. Let that bless you. I love you. God bless. Yeah. Oh, darn. <laughs> Uh, freak everybody out. Um, all right, if our ushers could please come forward. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. It is time to take our tithes and offering. And let me tell you, God will just bless you if you are afraid to give. Do not let that spirit of fear dictate your life because God will bless everything. I challenge you. I challenge you to do what his word says. Let's bless this. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for a great day. Lord, we thank you. Um, for the opportunity to be able to give to you. I pray that you will bless each gift and each offering and each tithe. And Lord, bless the person who um, is obeying your commands 20-fold. In your precious name I pray, amen. God is so good. Let me tell you a few things that's going on here. First of all, a lot of you guys have been asking about the all-church picnic. It has not been forgotten. We decided not to do it around Easter this year because, frankly, it about kills us to do Easter and the church picnic at the same time. So we thought, let's spread the wealth and move it to a different date. So we are, it is now May 19th. That is a Sunday. It's going to be at the YMCA at by Langham Creek, which is um, just uh, south of West Road off of Queenston in between Highway 6 and Barker Cypress. There's a street called Queenston. It's right down there, but we'll have maps closer to time. Um, if you would, it is $5 per person. That includes your meal, and you can sign up in the foyer. We just need a head count for food. Everybody come out. If y'all have been to our picnics, you know they're a whole lot of fun, and uh, we have a new uh, picnic coordinator this year. Her name is Missy Millspaw. She attends our Cypress location, but she comes on Wednesdays, so a lot of you may know her um, from coming on Wednesdays. So we're thankful for her and the team that she is putting together. And again, that is May 19th. It's a Sunday. It's coming up. So everybody come because it, everybody's doing it. Okay? <laughs> Stuff. Okay. And then uh, Kids Camp is coming up. It is a uh, June 26th, something like that. It leaves on a Wednesday. Sorry, they didn't give me that date. But however, if we do need forms due by May 1st. And you do not have to have a deposit for the kids camp forms. So if you have questions, I'm sure you and your child is here. I'm sure you'll go over there to pick up your child and you can, everybody bounce on like Trey. Like, so at, just come up with like 20 questions at one time and all of y'all hit them with them. Just, just make them up, just so that I can enjoy it. And tell me about it later. Tell me how it went. So, um, but that's just our secret. I didn't say that. So if you need more information on Kids Camp, ask Pastor Trey. Then Youth Camp, their forms are due as soon as possible. And you don't get to buy so easy with your form on that one. You need a $30 deposit. And it really, just kind of get that stuff in. They need to get the places reserved for Youth Camp. And that is June 21st through 24th, parents. If you have a youth age student that would like to go to Youth Camp, send your kids to camp. They will be fine. I promise. They may break something, but it'll heal. Trust me. I know. So send them to camp. Enjoy yourself. Let them enjoy yourself. It may be torturous for you, but I promise it really isn't for them. I've gone to youth and kids camp, and they forget about you in love. Now go rest on that, won't you? I'm just, <laughs> that, that, that's my encouragement today. Your kids are going to forget all about you. Um, that's not very nice. They'll remember you when they come home. Then this Wednesday, we are having Freedom Ministry uh, class. It is called, <laughs> I'm just talking all over myself. We are doing Freedom. No, that's not what it's called. We're teaching on forgiveness. <laughs> it's not freedom from forgiveness because we don't want freedom from forgiveness. We want you to have forgiveness in your heart for those that you need forgiveness toward. This is a very, very important lesson. Nobody can be free if you're harboring unforgiveness in your heart. Kristen Bonin will be our teacher this Wednesday, so come join us for that for Freedom Ministry. And then Thursday night, we're having all church prayer, and it sounds like I need to come to that and set myself and my mouth free. Pastor Nolan. You guys ready to go glow this week? Awesome. Guys, one of the things I love about this series is the practical side of it. It is so easy. So today on the way out in the parking lot, glow. 
When you're at the restaurant later on and your waiter or waitress is waiting on you, glow, be nice, smile, be friendly. Tomorrow at work, glow. Parents, glow to your kids. It's so easy, and guys, as we do that, we're fulfilling the, the whole idea and the concept and the motto of this church. And what is it? Say it with me. We what? We love God, we love people, and love life. And as we do that, we're glowing. So guys, this week, I challenge you, glow, love people, be there for people, be Jesus to people, and man, you guys will make an incredible difference. So you guys have a great week, and we'll see you on Wednesday night.